Hi, this is Mike Henriksen from Strata in London. I'm here with Fernando Lucini. Fernando, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Good. So you're the CTO of HP Software? Of the software, of a piece of software division which is called Big Data. Big Data. Mm -hmm. And what in that role do you do at HP? So the software division of HP obviously is devoted to the software part of the business. Um, as you know, in HP we're all very interlinked. The, the business kind of works together. So we obviously have our big uh, hardware division, the networking division, the, the server division, so the compute, network, cloud, uh, as well as all the, all the stuff to do with the, with the devices. Uh, in software, we make sure that all of these things can solve business problems as well on the top. Uh, and in big data in particular, we look at specifically information. Um, even more specifically, you look at the, the, the plethora between unstructured information and structured information and all the problems that may you may relate to as big data in between, right? Uh, and we create software that helps our customers take any of that information in their, in their enterprise world um, or consumer world, or whatever it may be, um, and try to do uh, useful things with that information uh, from, say, from a traditional data warehouse to a less traditional sort of camera analytics and video analytics for you know, defense or for civil defense or for other forms of defense. So, for, so our life is all about taking uh, information um, and uh, helping our customers make use of that uh, in one way, shape, or form. Uh, and separately to that, we also happen to have our own business solutions that uh, deal with things like compliance and uh, 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 analytics of compliance um, and things like backup and such things like that. They're all based on, on data, so data is our life. Um, I always like to say that big data is a little bit of a confusing term for us because uh, we should be called data. HP data, but of course, um, I'm not, obviously I don't work for marketing, as you can tell. Um, uh, but for our customers, it's all around, if, if they have a source of information which is operational, they run, they laugh it with, and they have one, 10, 1,000 sort of these sources, our job is to give them the ability to, uh, to take all that information, uh, get outcomes out of it, you know, very popular these days, get outcomes, operationalize it when they need it, um, you know, build applications, uh, bring all this information from the dark to the light whenever possible. Does that help? Yes, so you know that, that sounds like one of the currents I'm hearing this year yeah. here is that it's not about your stack and your platform and the tools that you assemble yep. to get data and to, to manipulate data and to make sense out of it. Yep. It's actually to build solutions. And if right. you can't build solutions right. with the platforms you're assembling together or buying or partnering with, it doesn't make as much sense. So can you talk a little bit about yep. how HP helps your customers build solutions? Yep. So I see it in two separate lines though. I, I totally agree on the solution side, but I also see there's one side, which is solutions or, or applications, let's call it. Um, yeah, if yeah. one thing is never going to, and I know it's not, not a popular view maybe because all this big data stuff is very sexy to talk about, but uh, especially at Strata, right? <laughs> um, but uh, we're not going to stop making applications. That is a, a definitive you know, statement. We're not going to stop making them. We're going to make more. Um, so our customers are making loads of these things, and we may refer to it as operationalization of data, applications, you, you, you name your fad. So we're very lucky at HP because we have uh, we're kind of full cycle, right? So our, our customers can get from us the, the leading software that helps them solve the problem, uh, the consulting services and the, that can actually help them translate. Because in many cases, our customers, you know, you're an old company, you may not be in the business of creating an application that empowers information for one of their clients. Uh, they're in the business of drilling in the, in the ground and getting oil. Um, so we we can go and help them make that transition from all the information, what's the outcome that I want, how do I want to get it delivered to the customer, what does it look like on a phone at the end of the day or on a tablet or on a, on a device. Um, and, and of course, at the same time, we can do this in the cloud or on-premise. So the consumption model for us, it's neither here nor there, we're happy to comply. So we're lucky in that our customers have all of that. Uh, and it's, uh, it's very complete, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, as you say, it's maybe not necessarily about the tools, even though we make the tools, specifically my division makes the tools, but, but that's not the way our customers receive it. Our customers receive a, an evaluation of a business problem and a potential solution to that business problem and a return on that and, and ultimately the, the numbers of applications they can create on that source. On the other hand of this, we have the, the analytics part of the world, um, which is also very popular, right? Um, and there, the customers maybe are spending more time experimenting. Maybe they're spending more time doing analysis to paralysis of information. They're using Hadoop, they're using our tools, they're using whatever they can get their hands on. 
to try to figure out what is in this thing that I have an instinct as a CIO that there's value there. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard that one, but there's just lots of instinct. Well, there must be value in this data. I must collect it. I must instrument everything around me because it has value. Uh, and I think in the cycle today, we're at a point where we're CIOs are thinking, all right, I like the experiments. I, I like the applications better. I like that better. That kind of works for me. I can mm -hmm. make money out of it. My, you know, my CEO likes me and sort of stuff. Um, but we're still seeing a lot of the analytics part of this, where we are, and, and we have to encourage it. Because if we don't encourage it, I mean, look at the Hadoop infrastructure. Everybody has, uses Hadoop, and it's a way to experiment, to bring things together, to bring pools and information. If we don't have that, um, it's very difficult without the experiments to then build the applications. So the experimenting is a real healthy way of, of doing the, output, the art of the possible, if you will. So does intuition help for that then? Intuition and, and that feel, that gut feel that there's something here that, yeah, there's something value. in my data that I know is going to influence my business? Is there an intuition like uh, meter or some sort of, how do you figure that out? The way I see it, uh, maybe calling it, calling it intuition is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, yeah. is an unfair way to call it, but, but it's helpful. When you talk to CIOs and VPs of products or VPs of applications of businesses, they obviously have an immense professional experience. Domain right? knowledge, you know, yeah. they, they, have a, they have an instinct for what's going to work, they have knowledge of what has worked, but they also develop this complex uh, understanding of their world. So, um, so you'll have a fleet manager of a leasing company who has a he has a sense of what he can push his customers to try and do to get them to use the guy, the, old, the old stations he wants them to use. He has a real feel of what's going to work and what's not going to work. Can he quantify it and make it very data driven? Maybe not. But he has the instinct of, look, I can There's tell these guys there. with a message on the on their phone. Hey, if you go to the gas station that's near you now, I will incentivize you in some way, shape, or form, or I'll do some gaming for you to, to, to see if you're going to use it or not. So, um, so what I refer to as Instinct is, uh, is actually a powerful tool for CEOs, CIOs, as a VPs, anybody that's, that's the, the, the steward of data to, uh, to say, all right, uh, my experience tells me there must be value there. Now, what I want you to do is, and here's the big jump, what I want you to do is not go and experiment for the next 12 months and hope to God that there's an answer. What I want you to do is, I'm going to give you a metric. My metric is more of these guys take, getting more oil and more of the stations that I want them to go to. That's the metric. Go towards that. And those are the really healthy experiments. Whereas I'm going to set you a, cha a, ch you know, a challenge, let's call it a challenge. And it's a simple one, it's something you can measure. And I've given you the example of these companies, but there are umpteen of these around us, right? Customer satisfaction targets, you know, reduction in numbers of calls in my call center or mm -hmm. as a measure of satisfaction. Um, so that's the really healthy one, where the experiment needs to be done, but somebody's given a real guidance. The unhealthy one, where the instinct comes in, it's there's value there. You know, go and figure it out, you data scientist people. And that is maybe a without bit, the domain knowledge or the domain direction or you anything. Know, some direction of what it is that you want this data to achieve for you. Um, it's just this idea that is you know, there must be value. We must mine it. Um, in either, case, in either case, it's actually a very healthy time. I don't know if you've seen it from your interviews and oh, from yeah. walking around. It's a healthy time of experimentation. It's a healthy time of, uh, of tools. It's a healthy time of, of cloud. I, I, we love the, the, the idea of cloud. Uh, we love the customers consuming stuff in that way. It, it's a model that works for, I think, for the industry. Um, and that's actually another nice trend that takes us you know, in, in the HP Big Data world. Uh, we believe in strongly, which is that our customers um, you know, like that consumption model, we'll continue it. So what do you do to make that kind of user more happy? Well, you can't give them less. You've got to give them more, because less is not, you know, it's never going to work. Even though they don't know what more might be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You've got yeah. to, they gotta, they're going to give you more data because they have the perception that the, the more the merrier. They want more you know, tools, they want more solutions, they want more answers. Dashboards uh, or whatever. Exactly. They want, um, I love this, this particular term, which is this idea of, um, do it for me. I love it. It's, it's, uh, I, I love all the stuff. I love the hype. Do it for me. Which doesn't necessarily mean the, maybe the, the, the more traditional, you know, take the whole thing away from me. What it means is at a higher level, I don't want you necessarily to maybe run my service, which, you, which probably HP were doing anyway. What I mean is the CIO, the CTO, whoever it is, has told me that they want to get more people to those gas stations. Um, I, I'm not sitting on top of, of, of data scientists. As a matter of fact, I don't even know where to start. Uh, I want you to do it. Same tools, you'll use the same tools I use, uh, you know, maybe even a shared procurement, but you do it. 
Um, this is good for us yeah. because we have an overview of the industry. So what we translate from one customer moves to another. So what we learn in the in the logistics industry or what we learn in the communications industry on the, or in the transportation industry or whatever industry, we can translate very well across. And we've got wonderful use cases of of um, maybe the automobile industry, people learning what to do with the telemetry that comes from vehicles or the telemetry that comes from service stations. How does that turn into better choice of parts for vehicles so you get better sort of repeatable satisfaction? Um, companies don't want to learn that each time if somebody can give them a little bit of a heads up. And so what do you guys do? You have all these use cases. Yep. How does that inform your direction and your, your group in your software going forward, because yeah. is that how you evolve? What you're doing is from the use cases that you actually have? So we're very customer driven. Um, we listen a lot. So it's an HP trademark, we listen a lot. So um, what we've been hearing, for example, this year is that um, our customers want 100% of the data, for example. They're, they're no longer living in the structured world, the unstructured world, they just bring it together. So that was this year. Um, so what we've done is we've created a, a platform called Haven to do exactly that. Haven is about taking 100% of the data. It's the same tools you know, it's in languages you understand, like SQL and REST and all these things, but it keeps you, it, it deals with the entirety of your, of your world of information. Um, we're hearing that they, you know, they want to move to a consumption model. No problem, love it. We happen to, <laughs> to do all of our business, so great stuff. So the way we evolve it is by having lots of uh, customer advisory boards, uh, obviously, we're lucky we have a, a, an entire arm of consulting that, that's listening to the more complex problems. Because we, so, we, so there's, on, there's the big trends, right? You make big trends like 100% of the data, or you make big trends like uh, consuming in the cloud. And then there's the detail. The detail is, you know, we, you know, we still do a lot of clever analytics for people like Facebook or Twitter or Uber or people like that, who are customers of the big data group. They also are very intelligent, sort of discerning users that will come and say, I want this particular feature to yeah. work a thousand percent faster because I want people to get their Uber thing quicker. Um, so we also have to take that side of the, of the innovation, which is the, the point of detail, the best of breed of a particular product, the speed, accuracy, flexibility, integration into Hadoop in a transparent way. So two big megatrends, listen to the customers for the big items and then the very large amount of detail that's super important to, I've given you three names which are wonderful to use as references, but who cares? Customer X, doesn't matter. So we have a lot of customer contact, lots and lots of customer contact. Mm -hmm. And so you sift through your own use cases to figure out what that is that's important. Excellent, so if we sat down 12 months from now yep. in London next year, where will you say HP has come from and where will you want to be next year? Um, I think we'll be in a, the transition to, to, to cloud, to call it, to make it generic, but to, to the consumption model, which is more of a sort of as you go. I think there'll be a substantial move there in 12 months. I think that'll be the consumption theme for this year. Consumption as you go, interesting. Consumption. Interesting. Consumption without simplicity. Consumption with all the bells and whistles. Yeah. I think that's what we'll be. Excellent. Fernando, we look forward to having that conversation next year. Indeed, indeed. Thank, Thank you. you.